Well, as we've been getting earnings from a number of these major banks, Royal, TD, BMO, Scotia, they all have one thing in common. They have diversified outside of Canada. They have another thing in common. That diversification has not been paying off this quarter, seeing struggles in the United States and for Scotiabank abroad as parts of Latin America are in a recession. Let's think about this with Dan Rohinton. He's portfolio manager at IA Investment. Dan, you're a shareholder in this group, and for a long time, this group of stocks have been applied for their strategic moves outside of Canada. Is that just a little bit of a hiccup in what is strategically still the right decision? It's probably the right decision over a multi-year horizon, but for the next few quarters, arguably even the next year, maybe a bit longer than that, it's going to cause a little, uh, we'll call it teething pains, even though they've been in the business for 30, 40 years, in some cases, in the case of BMO. So right. it needs time but it's gonna be a source of pain and consternation for the foreseeable future. So you think this is not just gonna show up in this quarter, this is something you're gonna to start to see in subsequent quarters for the next year, and will there be anything, any levers that they can pull to offset some of that pain? Unfortunately, the main issue is that net interest margins, and I'm talking about the US franchises, which is the most important for the Canadian banks as a whole, they have to face margin pressure because consumers are more aware, they're more empowered, and they're shopping around for higher rates. So that's leading to margin pressure. And the only offset that all the banks really have in their toolkit is going to be operating expense control and think layoffs, think branch, branch closures. Outside of that, it's a little hard to offset and outrun the revenue headwinds. There's been a real separation in how these banks have performed so far in 2023. Normally, they travel as a pack, but those four, Royal, Bank of Nova Scotia, TD, and BMO, are the worst performers. And those that are just uh, domestically focused, and Laurentian, I get, is a, a specific situation because it is potentially in play, but National Bank, Canadian Western Bank, and even CIBC hasn't fared as poorly. How are you thinking about that skew? Would you lean into the more domestic players? You know, it's an interesting question because for a long time, external growth and to your point, capital markets in the case of National Bank was viewed as uh, discounts relative to the US. Right now, there are premiums. I would say the most important thing is diversification. So Royal Bank really sticks out at the top of the pack, bar none. And I wouldn't count out headwinds in the domestic economy just yet. So leaning in domestically and leaning into Canadian pure plays I would say it's already priced in and wouldn't be where we would take our incremental dollars. So where would so you So we take would start that? with diversification. Start with diversification and lean into Royal Bank specifically. Royal Bank is an interesting one because expenses have been difficult to rein in. Um, and the point was made on the conference call that layoffs might not get you there. For example, at City National, which is now losing money. Yeah, Royal has, for the first time that I've ever seen, a big expense problem, and that's true for TD, but Royal really stands apart. So they need to continue uh, managing expenses down. They've added thousands of employees in Canada in the last year. That's probably going to get dialed back, unfortunately, for and cause more pressure domestically on employment. But as a whole, cutting staff, cutting branches is the starting point, and it's really contingent from there. But at least the most important thing I'd leave you with on this, Amber, is at least that's in their control. Banks have a very hard time controlling revenue. They can control expenses. So this is an opportunity for Royal to really stand apart because we know their revenue diversification is already there and the expense is under their control. So they need to lean into that even more than they already are starting to. So another pushback would be, given all of that, is Royal's premium to the group warranted? It's always been a premium bank and it will remain a premium bank because of its global footprint, its diversification. So what I would say is the more fragile premium is the national bank premium and the uh, and the discount on CIBC. So you wanna be careful with those areas because they can ebb and flow with the sentiments of the market, but revenue diversification and scale are persistent and long-term competitive advantages. So I think Royal Bank is gonna be the premium bank in Canada, as far as I can tell in our estimates. 
let's spend a minute on Scotia because this is one of the cheaper banks out there, a dividend yield of 6.5%. It is bouncing off of a two-year low with a CEO who's made it very clear that he's looking to shake things up. We haven't seen major evidence of it yet, um, but, you know, is, is the downside limited? Um, it's, you know what, valuation-wise, I would agree with you. Diversification-wise, I would agree with you. The big swing factor is really what's going on with the Latin American economies. Are they going to benefit from the structural changes that they've been making? If that's the case, and there's a real golden era coming for Scotiabank. Outside of that, if Latin American economies follow their historical path, then maybe it's going to be a bit more of a muddy picture. All right. So I think it's more of a coin flip, but I do think there's more things to like than dislike for Bank of Nova Scotia. Okay. Uh, Dan, we